Hello and welcome to another episode of Salty Sunday. Today we're talking about what happens when the ocean's top predator meets the ocean's other top predator. Orcas and great white sharks overlap across huge stretches of ocean. They hunt similar prey and patrol the same coasts. But confirmed interactions between them are few and almost all of them involve adult great white sharks being hunted and killed by orcas in places like South Africa or California. But something new has just emerged in the Gulf of California. Over the past decade, marine heat waves, strong El Nino events, and the warming blob in the North Pacific have pushed juvenile great white sharks into new regions. That includes Isla Guadalupe, and now the Gulf of California, a place where orcas are seen year round. And while orcas in this region are known for hunting rays, bull sharks and even great white sharks, nobody has ever documented them preying on great white sharks. That is, until now. Researchers have recorded the first ever interactions between orcas and juvenile great white sharks in Mexican waters by a pod of orcas known as the Moctezuma pod and only the second confirmed case in the world of orcas targeting young great white sharks. The footage they captured from boats, underwater cameras and drones is extraordinary. The first encounter happened on August the 15th, 2020. A pod of five female orcas, made up of four sub-adults and one adult, approached a juvenile white shark, around two metres long. Almost immediately, the orcas began coordinated strikes. A sub-adult female orca first drove the juvenile white shark towards the surface forcing it to twist away to avoid a direct hit. Another orca soon lifted the shark from below. It was already wounded and bleeding. The orca releases it at the surface, where a second attacker takes over. The orcas alternate attempts to grip the shark by the pectoral fins. Two sub-adult orcas then take control of the shark, rolling it upside down, a maneuver that likely triggered tonic immobility a kind of temporary paralysis that sharks enter when inverted. At this point, the entire pod descends together. When they resurface, the adult female and several sub-adults appear with the shark's liver. The organ is passed between four whales in a calm, deliberate exchange before the pod finally slips beneath the water once more. But the event didn't end there. Moments later, the same pod located a second juvenile white shark of similar size and repeated the exact same sequence, strikes, inversion, removal of the liver and abandonment of the carcass. The second encounter happened almost exactly two years later and almost in the same location. This time the pod included an adult male, an adult female, two sub-adults and a calf. Again their target was a juvenile white shark around two meters long. And the same sequence as before was followed, with the calf also sharing in the liver. Many orca ecotypes around the world have learned to remove the liver of their prey and ignore the rest of the body, as livers are large, buoyant and incredibly energy dense. And it is the same technique used by the two orcas, Port and Starboard, that hunt great white sharks in South Africa. Adult white sharks usually avoid this kind of predation because they remember orcas. Once they've had an encounter, they show strong avoidance behaviour, essentially a fear-driven evacuation from the area. That response is so effective that it likely prevents orcas from repeatedly killing adult sharks and helps protect already small regional shark populations. But juveniles don't have that experience. Female white sharks return to the same pupping areas year after year and they have long reproductive cycles. So young sharks end up in the same nursery zones no matter what happened the previous season. And without learned avoidance, juveniles may be far more vulnerable to consistent predation if orcas begin targeting those sites. And that's where climate change really enters the story. Because when ocean temperatures shift, it doesn't just move animals around on a map. It reshapes entire relationships between predators and prey. Juvenile white sharks are being pushed into nursery grounds that no longer align with historical patterns and into places where highly specialised orcas are waiting. These encounters are signals. 
that warming oceans are creating new vulnerabilities, new interactions and new pressures for species that are already stretched thin. If the ocean keeps warming, we're going to see more of these unexpected collisions between animals that didn't evolve to meet this often. And for species like great white sharks, with slow reproduction and small regional populations, the consequences could be devastating. Understanding these changes and acting on the reasons behind them is going to be essential if we want marine ecosystems to stay in balance. Thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this episode then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.